Thank you. Th thanks, Janice. Uh, well done. My name is com complicated even in Portuguese, so well, well done. So um, I, I work for Vale. I work in the IT department. Uh, I'm in charge of um, IT solutions for production management in our iron ore and coal divisions. Uh, and this includes uh, some of the solutions we, we talked here, manufacturing execution systems, uh, transportation systems. We also have ports, rail, uh, uh, we, we have ports and railroads, so it's kind of systems, and also supply chain management solutions. Um, although we are involved in several uh, initiatives uh, with technology we talked today, analytics, uh, predictive, uh, and, and other stuff, uh, more modern stuff, let's say. Uh, the, the case that I'm going to present today that I would like to focus more, I would say foundation, more basic stuff, but that I believe it's very, very important to, to really make this uh, analytics work. Uh, as we, we already heard several times, right? Digitalization is about to connect, so we have much more data, much more uh, source of information. And, and one of the challenges we are seeing is really how to uh, organize this, make them consistent. And this was one of the challenges we, we, we suffered. Um, we, the, the mining production uh, management is, is core for, for our business. We have a lot of data and uh, without organize this data, we cannot really take advantage of the, the uh, supply chain planning capabilities we already have in place. <clears throat> so this is the uh, legal disclaimer that I'm not going to, to read. And the agenda for today, uh, it's four topics. First, introduce Vale. Probably some of you doesn't know my company. Uh, explain the challenges we were facing in production management. Uh, the solution and approach we took to solve it. And finally, some uh, lessons learned and, and takeaways, uh, I hope in some way can be useful for you in your own organizations and, and journeys. Okay, I'm not uh, English speaking, right, native. So if it's not, it's too fast, if it's not clear, please raise your hand, no problem, we'll try again. So please let me know. <coughs> So very quickly, Vale, vale is a mining company uh, based in Brazil. Uh, we are the global leader in iron ore, uh, nickel, and, and pellet, pellet, uh, pelletizing. We also produce uh, copper, coal, uh, and, and uh, fertilizers and several other products. Uh, we also have a, a very important presence in logistics in Brazil. As I said, we have several assets, railroads, and, and ports. And if you are interested, we, in our website, we have tons of information, nice videos about uh, our operations, our projects, and so on. So I don't, don't want to spend a lot of time talking about the company, but feel free to go to valley.com, uh, and I'm going to find a lot of information. Talking more specifically about our iron ore division, uh, we consider that's the most complex and extensive supply chain in the industry, right? In, in the iron ore industry. So we have uh, four integrated systems in Brazil. Uh, the, the, this, what we call the production or integ uh, integrated production system is comprised by mines, uh, railroads, and ports. Uh, we also have several pelletizing plants. Most of them are in Brazil, but we also have operations in, in, in Oman. Uh, and I don't know, again, if you know uh, Brazil, but Brazil is a continental country like US. So the, this production system, they are in some uh, cases very far from each other. So it's probably 1,500 miles away. Uh, for example, the north system to the south system. So geographically very, very far. Um, we also have what we call our exten extended supply chain. The uh, because our main customers are in, in Asia, that's very far uh, from Brazil, right? So we also need to, to manage uh, blending and distribution uh, centers in Asia. Uh, we also need to manage a fleet of ships to be competitive in this market, being so far uh, to the customers. 
uh, compared to our main competitors that, that are uh, based in Australia. So it's a, it's a, for the industry, it's a complex uh, supply chain. Uh, just uh, important to note, our production, estimated production for this year is 345 million tons of iron ore, and we have 22 mines. So, explain now the issue we're facing. So, in the last decade, uh, all the mining industry grew a lot. It's not probably you are aware. We also grew a lot, and part of this growth came through acquisitions. So, we we hired, we, we acquired several companies in Brazil. It was good. We, we brought volume, we brought people, right, talents, and so on. But we also uh, brought new cultures, new process management, new way to measure things, and new applications, new systems. Uh, we, we, just for production management, we, at that time, we got more than 15 applications. So we got to a point that was very difficult to compare the, the, the operations, was difficult to have timely information about the operations, was difficult to maintain and evolve the solutions we, we had, and the cost, uh, the IT costs raised a lot. So we, we believe we had a problem, we need to, to do something. And uh, this solution we, we envisioned was create a, a program uh, instead, uh, uh, to, to have a single solution for production management uh, in the company. Uh, was a manufacturing execution system, was not, uh, although we are not a manufacturer, we have plants, but mine is a little different, but same kind of solution. And we try to, to address uh, the, the issues with three, let's say three pillars. First, really have a, a single solution for, uh, from the pit to the product expedition. So to really drive standardization uh, and, and ensure best practice. As I said, the, the pro production is there far, so uh, as you, you uh, can, can uh, think, they had totally different practices, different ways to do things. So uh, we expected with the platform also to force some sharing and, and really uh, uh, make everybody evolve. Uh, another objective was really to be more integrated in, in both ways. So we had much, we had much more uh, instrumentation, right systems, data coming from the plants. So how to uh, use this to be more consistent, to have more consistent, consistent data, uh, also to reduce the, the manual effort to get more, have more productivity, uh, but also in the uh, be more integrated in a horizontal way. So we have several solutions, uh, historians, uh, dispatch systems, and other kind of solutions that are very important. They, they, the, we need to keep them, but we need to make sure the numbers, they, they, they are consistent. And one of the objectives of the platform was really have all the workflows to make sure we had all this data consistent. Uh, and uh, finally, we're thinking on the future. So we didn't have a platform for the future. We had the mainframe applications, we have uh, visual basic uh, .NET applications, and was not really a solution to, be, to support the growth uh, globally. So we also trying to have a modern and, and robust architecture uh, that uh, allow us also to evolve easily and in a uh, less expensive way that we're doing. Good, good. So we call it GPV. GPV stands for Valley Production uh, Management uh, for mining. And we started the execution. Now should be the part that we explain how we did it well. But unfortunately, and uh, I don't know if it happens in your companies, but in, in Valley, sometimes we make mistakes. The first step was not really uh, a good step. Right? We started this journey with a blueprint, trying to understand all the needs and, and capabilities, and in a, in a, with a pilot implementation to, to test these concepts. We start this, started this in 2008 uh, and didn't work well. So we, we did a selection based on the blueprint we, we implemented in the pilots was uh, as planned, but the, the, the project itself was not good. We, we had cost overruns, we had delays. Um, 
We finished the implementation. We spent probably more two years uh, trying to really catch up and, and, and evolve, stabilize the solution. But we got to a point that we realized that was not the right approach, the right solution for solve the issues we I, I already mentioned. So we, in, in after five years, so a, lo a lot of time, a lot of effort, we decided to redevelop the solution and in a new architecture. And what what we did wrong, that I think it's uh, useful to share uh, with other companies, is a cheap way to learn, right? To learn with others' mistakes. So we, we had 22 mines plus plants, uh, plus uh, distribution centers and so on. And we, we're trying to have a single solution. Uh, I call more enterprise, uh, enterprise uh, wide uh, MES, right? And the beginnings seem just pile up or, or trying to replicate what we have for one and for everybody's going to work. But the complexity is, is much uh, bigger. Uh, and we, we did the blueprint, we, try, we understood the requirement, but uh, looking back, I think we, we, we haven't uh, detailed, uh, uh, we, we didn't detail enough the requirements of all units. We took sample units, important units, uh, but each unit had a, a, a specific things that we, when we're trying to implement there, we saw that was not really just culture, or good reason to doesn't work. So first thing, we didn't understand uh, well uh, the solution we chose. I think we, we thought that we understood, but we, we didn't understand the limitations and the maturity for the model we want. We didn't want a solution for each plant. We, we want a single solution running for all the plants with a volume of data integration, integration that was on a different scale. Um, we, the vision was so clear that we uh, we believe everybody was, was, was uh, with us, right? So single solution, standards, right? Reduce cost, seems good, right? But when you're trying to implement that, we're going to find a lot of resistance. Uh, and I think we're too overconfident on, on the business uh, readiness to really make it, this vision happen. Uh, we, the vendor we selected didn't know uh, enough, the two, that uh, was another issue. And the, the last one, and we, we do this a lot, shortcut approach. So we could have avoid that. Uh, and probably in the first two years, if you had the courage to see it's not working, let's uh, stop and rethink. But we're trying to solve, right? Fix this and that and so on. Okay, we keep, keep moving. We implemented, but uh, in some way, I think we wasted time. Uh, so several issues and happens a lot in projects this, this, of this kind. Um, so we decided to start over and learn from these problems, right? And, and from other initiatives, as I said, I, I'm responsible for ports, operations, and railroads too. So at the same time, we're, we are, we, uh, we're implementing for port a similar solution with the similar challenges. We have more than 10 ports globally and same kind of problems, so we, we, we succeed in these initiatives and a lot of things we did there that worked, we also measured with the lessons learned to propose the new way to, to move on. So what we, we changed in the approach. So first invest time to start right. So we, we tried to rush, mining was growing, was important and so on, but we, we said now, we, we, uh, as I said, we, we waste five years, right? So let's now plan accordingly. Let, let's understand in detail all requirements. Uh, let's understand carefully all the technical architecture involved, involved like, uh, the vendor capabilities, and do a lot of change management on all levels to make sure the organization really understand not only what they will going to want, but also what they're going to, going to lose with this, because there's no right, magic solution. It's very good uh, for in, our, in several aspects, but we, we need to accept to change your practice, right? Ad adopt new concepts and so on, and sometimes not something easy to sell. Second thing, uh, for an enterprise-wide initiative, pilot is very important, but can be, can be very dangerous. So 
we need to make sure what we're piloting really scales. Uh, and the way we find in value, where I did uh, this kind of initiative three times for different businesses, really the product must be ready for any operation since the beginning. Because after three implementations, the first guy, you're not going to accept to change a lot of stuff or again, start to be in a, uh, a situation that the solution is not mature and so on. So you need to be ready for any operation and trying to, to implement the most complex first. So again, in the port uh, implementation, we, imp we implement in, in our mo um, um, biggest port was hell in the first month, but when we stabilize it, all, all the other ports, in, uh, include the, the, uh, the ports abroad, they, they, very, they was very easy because they are more simple. So we adopted that here too. And ownership, the vendors, the solutions, they are very important. You need to really find the right solution, the right vendor, but you need to have a team, uh, management, right, uh, capabilities, functional capabilities, technical capabilities, uh, methodologies, and so on. Uh, otherwise, you're going to lose the control. And we also decided to adopt the agile methodology. So as soon as we knew all the requirements, we could develop according to the, uh, to the needs and show the product for the customer and validate and so on. So when we, uh, as I mentioned, we replaced it. One, one of the applications we replaced was a, a mainframe application. Uh, okay, it's an old technology, but worked for 30 years. So we have a lot of, a lot of uh, business rules, a lot of knowledge in the application that sometimes nobody remember, right? So we did interact this interactive approach, the agile, uh, let us find this kind of problems during the, the implementation. So the solution was designed to be in the middle of, uh, let's say the business systems, enterprise systems, the ERP, the supply chain, uh, and the, the plant systems. Uh, we cover from the extraction to the shipping. Uh, so we have the, the plant phase, the beneficiation, the stocking, all the scheduling, quality, downtime events, and all the workflow to validate all, the, all this data and make this data uh, cons consistent. This workflow, it's per shift. So for every shift, we do this close. Uh, this validation process for mass, for quality, for time. Uh, we, we have several integrations. Uh, so we integrate with uh, the historians, uh, dispatch systems, scaliers, the port applications, railroads, uh, uh, limbs, the ERP, and so on. So several government applications. In our case, we also have to uh, integrate with the government. Uh, just to give an idea of the scale, we have more than 200 uh, features, more than 50 integrations, more than 90, uh, 90 KPIs. It's a multi-language and multi-time zone application. We build uh, a KPI engine because one, one learn also was that two things. It's almost impossible to know everything the user wants in terms of KPIs and, and, and reports and so on. And also, uh, to make them consistent, consistent, we need to create this engine. If you let the user connect to the database and, and do their own uh, calculations, uh, the numbers will never fit. So for sure, we, the, the new analytics, the, the, the visualization was very, very important, but we need to connect with, some, with a database that's consistent. So this, this, this was the way we, we, we found to get this, uh, this compromise. And we have a, a self-service dashboard and, and report model. Here's more another example. This is just the, just the pit phase, how we connect for the planning since the budget that comes from the ERP or the scheduling, uh, we use uh, data that comes from uh, mining planning systems, uh, all, the all the execution, for example, in the pit, we already have the dispatch, 
we need to use this data for sure. Um, and here, for example, all the events of time, we, we, we have dispatch. We have different products for dispatch. We're not being able to uh, standardize this, and probably will never happen. Uh, and, but we need to make sure the, the KPIs are consistent. So all the, all the master data, how we classify uh, the events, sits on this solution. So this way, we, we make sure we are really, com when you have compare OEE or the uh, utilization of a truck with a, uh, among uh, different mines, we're really looking the same thing. Uh, although the concepts are similar, the way the operations use it was very different, and the numbers, uh, they could not be comparable. So this, uh, not only we, we grab all this information, but we create a, a layer that we make sure uh, we have consistency. All the uh, master data is controlled by, by this application by a group of people that uh, it's, uh, it's for engineering in Valley. Um, inventory, the quality, all the integrations among the, the sampling process and so on. So we, we have the, all the workflow and real time or near real time reports. So we, we know near real time and we can compare not only the execution because this, in this case we already have in dispatch, right? But also what was planned, what was scheduled, what was the rhythm and, and so on. Uh, some, some more details here. So the first, first try, we decided to move with a package. The second, we decided to do custom. No issue with a package or custom. It's case by case. In our case, we didn't find uh, the right solution for our problem. So we, we, we prefer to develop. Uh, we have, a, in terms of implementation, single and global instance, so all the data from all the mines sits in the same place. We managing today more than 11,000 equipments, more than 120,000 KPI calculations, more than 2 million uh, messages being processed among all the integrations. <laughs> and we, 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 we plan to serve uh, up to 11, 1,000, sorry, uh, users. So the, here, more the uh, summary of where we are. So we already implemented the second phase in 70% of our iron ore uh, operations in terms of volume, not in terms of quantity. So we already have the most important operations in Valley, including the new uh, project S11D, that's our $14 billion uh, CAPEX, that's a new brand operation that's also uh, is already using the new solution for production management. And we plan to close the loop in May with the last, last uh, production complex. Uh, so it's a, it's a big solution, so for sure we have problems, right, every day. Uh, but no disruption, no, no, big, no big issues so far. Uh, we're getting a lot of uh, good feedback from, from the end users and the management. So I, I, I believe that all the lessons learned that we put in place now, we, we're seeing uh, uh, bring results. In terms of benefits, uh, we, what we, we expected and what we are capturing. So first, we we. Uh, would like to have more availability and performance, right? Uh, as I said, with several solutions, and, and in Brazil in the last years also we have more regulations, we have more e-government. So for example, to ship a train today, I need to have an electronic invoice, so the train cannot uh, be shipped without this and involves a lot IT. And we, we had the issue, so this was important. Uh, and we, we seen uh, that we, we're doing very well in this area. The solution is very stable. The second thing is really consistency and productivity to, to really track and report what's happening in the, the mining chain. So again, same database, same concepts, same KPIs. 
so we are, this is, is, is working well. We fight a little bit, so if sometimes the someone say no, it's it's different here. We need to, to calculate in a different way. So we we still in the cultural right uh, journey to 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 show that we need to have a single way to compare things. But it's the, the technically the solution is working. Uh, agility and cost avoidance to roll out new operations. So since the solution was designed to be global and to be implemented in different operations, we it's it's working well. So we we are at seeing around 40% of cost avoidance in, in, in rollout projects like we did for S11D. And and was really uh, most of the efforts configuration integrations, right? Not really big big change in the application. The uh, technology cost reduction, so percent support several applications now. Uh, in our since our operation is 24 by 7, it's a big operation. This means some millions uh, annually recurrent uh, costs. And the last one. So th this one, uh, I didn't consider that we get there just because we didn't finish it uh, and uh, we didn't decommission the, all the old solutions, right? But it's, it's according to the plan. Uh, we're going to decommission the old solutions and the mainframe and so on. So we're going to get there. there. And the last one, that's one of the main objects, but it's very difficult to, to measure, especially because the business must recognize that, that's improve asset utilization. So having all this information available near real time in a consistent way right, uh, will give us much more insights what's going on. And that's what we, we believe and we expect. Uh, so part of the business case of the solution is improve uh, asset utilization. We need to finish the project and together with the business measure and improve that. But we, we, we believe on that because for the first time we put in the same place uh, information that were completely uh, uh, dispersed. Not, and I'm not talking only uh, among mines, even inside the mine. The number that you have in the pit, in the plant, in the loading, they, they're different. Now we have the same number. So we believe a lot that we're going to get this uh, too. So some takeaways and next steps. So I think it's clear, right? Speed is very important, and, but we learn it in the right and the wrong way, right? We need to, to, it's good when you are in the right direction. So it's very important to choose the right solution architect. This is one of the few things that's very difficult, very expensive to change later on. So we spend time on this is very important. Okay, maybe we're, we're naive at the time, but culture, it's strategy for breakfast. It's nice. We see this PowerPoint, people likes day by day. They behave sometimes in a different way. So understand the culture and manage it properly is very important uh, to sustain the project. Uh, I've been in Valley for 19 years, and so I was not really new in the company, but it's uh, when you really like something, when you really believe in something, sometimes you don't want to see, right, the reality. So culture is very important. You need to manage properly. <clears throat> okay, it's a long journey. If you're implementing an enterprise-wide solution like that, it will not take three months, four months. It will take years. You're going to change the leadership along the time. Uh, so you need to really have a good liaison in the business, right? You need to have someone that believes on that. And we, we were able to really create that and, and, and share not only the, the vision, but all the difficulties, all the challenges, right? Uh, to, to make sure we, we can f uh, finish the journey. S choose the, the one you were working, uh, partnering with the initiative, right? So. At this case, we, we had Cantec, and it was very important. Again, three years, we're going to find problems. With all the planning, all the lear, uh, uh, learning, we had tough moments in the project, not, tech, not only technical problems, and um, not only the, the technical knowledge. I mean, we need to have someone that believes on that, 
and that has a long-term partnership because it's, uh, it's, we had more than 100 people involved in this project, more than 60 people just from Cantec, but more than 100 people full-time from Valley and other vendors. It's a huge initiative. Uh, cannot, if you don't have a long-term um, mindset to, to deal with the daily problems, you're probably not going to finish uh, the initiative. Another important lesson, uh, planning is very, very important, but things change all the time. So we need to accommodate, need to create an environment to accommodate change. Uh, since the beginning, the contracts, the planning, all the characteristics of the software, we always thought that something could change. So how are we going to deal with the change, right? So we're trying to do the first, um, the most complex um, deploy first, operation first, but if they don't want, if they have uh, something, re uh, some reason that doesn't allow them, we need to have ways to, to change that. The same for the software, if you need additional, additional features. So, uh, in fact, the first uh, plan for this project was a six go live uh, project. Then we move it to a three go live project, and in fact, what we're doing is a four go lives because of the S11D project. And, this flexibility in contracts in the planning uh, should be since the, the roots. Must be since the roots. And for sure, right? So the vision is important, uh, strategy is important, culture is important, but we need really the team that make this happen. So we need to have uh, smart people, committed people, because a uh, good strategy doesn't survive uh, poor execution. Uh, the first implementation was the same strategy. We, we tweaked a little bit, but overall was, was the first. Uh, but uh, we didn't succeed in the execution. So next steps. We finished in the last go live in Iowa. We already started the rollouts for the call. Uh, confirming that the solution is really flexible. We also start to evaluate for other commodities. Uh, now we're getting back, uh, uh, closing the loop with supply chain, right? We um, short-term uh, supply chain analytics that we trying to implement in the past and we gave up because we had so many sources of data that were not consistent. Now we have a foundation to, to resume, so now we're starting to, to uh, resume uh, this implementation. We already have a platform for supply chain, so now you're get, we're getting uh, back to this uh, implementation. And as we've been seeing today, right, we have much more technologies, ideas, analytics, and so on. And this, this is a big foundation for, for our strategy, for our digital strategy, right, to be, to be, uh, to use the same words we, we hear today. So this is our story. I hope it's some way useful for you, and thanks a lot for your attention.